Today we're going to look at an everyday item that pretty much everybody has at least one or two of around the house. It's something that can make you a ton of money if you know which ones to look for. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about an item that I pretty much find all over the place. It's something that you got to scour and look for. Today we're talking about vintage flashlights. Believe it or not, some of these can sell for thousands. They don't have to be super old either. 20, 30 year old flashlights can go for thousands. Even brand new ones can sell right this very minute for thousands of dollars. Let's look at some of the ones you should find laying around in houses, estate sales, garage sales, and definitely thrift stores right now. Now, flashlights can turn up pretty much anywhere. Our first biggest flashlight sale came from one that we found at a Savers before they shut down around here. It was hanging on the peg rack in the back by where the junk cameras were and all that sort of thing for $2.99. And what I found was a version of this flashlight right here that I'm showing you. This one here is what's called a redhead, and this is one of the original versions of this. This is basically an early version of a road flare, but it's a flashlight. The top end is red. It could flash and other things like that. Now it didn't go for quite 1750, but it went for around 1600. Now with this one here, someone who has buffed this up pretty extensively, this should be chrome plated, silver finish, nickel finish. Now if you look really closely, you can see many different spots where the finish is still there where it couldn't be buffed down because where it's at on here. So it's still a nice item. If this was fully chromed, I would bet that it would go for more than this as well. Now this one here is one of the earlier ones and probably the best one you want. Part of the reason this one is so expensive is the rounded bottom on this one here. Couldn't stand up or anything like that. It was just rounded off, kind of like a bullet end or a torpedo end to some extent. Very, very nice one here. Now, this is the version that I found at a Savers on that peg rack. And I sold ours for over $600 in just a short period of time. Now, since then, I found several more of this exact same one. Mixed up in junk bags or dumped in with other flashlights or just sitting on a shelf at an estate sale because no one realized what it actually is. This is made for a car. It was made to actually, again, be a road flare. There's many different versions of this. The older version, as I said, has the torpedo end. This one has a flat end on the bottom base handle of it, as you can see here. It says that on it, redhead on it, which is the red light on the top of it. All the lenses in here are obviously solid glass. The side lenses and the whole works. They're separate pieces on these also. If they're damaged, they still will sell. People will repair these. You can get some replacement parts from some companies. But anyway, it's an excellent sale here. I've never sold one for this much, but we've done extremely well with this exact same version here. Now, there's a later version of this one as well. This one dates to the 1950s. It still sells for over $200. So either way you go, it's still a very nice one. Now, there's some plastics and stuff involved in here as well. It's the same basic principle. These weren't needed at some point, so you would just buy a flare kit or something like that. You wouldn't have to worry about the batteries going dead or leaking or anything else like that. These went out of style and fad long, long ago. Now, many companies made flashlights. They made them for equipment and all sorts of things. The one we looked at was made to be put in a car. It's a car flashlight, road flare, the whole works. Now, this one's from Indian Motorcycles from the 1940s. It is Art Deco, as you can see. Very elaborate, very unique, very interesting. $325. Just an excellent primo example of something like this. Now, EverReady made a ton of different types of flashlights flashlights back in the early heyday of flashlights. Now this one's cast iron as well. It was made to last. As you can see, $229. So just because it may look like some junky or ratted out lamp sitting on a shelf, it could be a flashlight of sorts. EverReady items are marked nicely on the bottom. You can't miss it. They marked everything that I've ever run into. So excellent piece here. Now flashlights can be found pretty much everywhere you go. A lot of people look at a dirty, dingy flashlight and not think a thing of it. Might be missing a piece or two or something like that. Even 
even parts and pieces of an expensive flashlight will still sell. You can have pieces replaced. People will repair them and restore them back to the original appearance. So I do mess with this area. Anywhere I go, if I see flashlights, I do check them out. Now, flashlights are made for all different types of industries and uses. This one's from the mining industry. This is a miner's flashlight. Uh, some of them were made by specific companies. This is another one of the early EverReady ones. So excellent one here. $125. Even if this doesn't work, it's missing the glass or anything else like that, they still do sell. Now here's the same one in the box for about double what you see there. Now this one isn't super, super highly collected just because a lot of people aren't interested in these style or this type of flashlight. But with a box or anything like that, the box does add a good chunk of value to it. Basically an NOS item, new old stock. Now this one is marked and made by Campbell, and I do believe this has some relation to Campbell's Soup. Many companies in the past made flashlights during certain times. Maybe it's a war issue or something like that for the war effort. Either way you go, this is a hand crank when you wind this up to make it light. Similar to modern day style ones, but this technology has been around for a very long time. There are even some solar based ones from way back when that you could recharge the battery through some solar process but anyway 162 dollars for this one they don't look like much some of these either if you don't know what it is sometimes you might not even realize it's a flashlight just by the sheer looks and construction of some of them now copper and brass are some of the most popular ones just like in any other area of collectibles steampunk it goes into that field and many people do want these they will scour all over the internet for vintage early brass and copper ones it's a standard model from the 1920s or 30s it could have been polished up it could have originally been chrome people don't really care it still went for 135 bucks again these are utilitarian items these are items meant to be used not collected in any way at all so the fact that they're still around is what makes them collectible. The fact that it was made 100 years ago or more in some cases is what adds to the value. Now here's an EverReady. This is a display piece as well. This could be in someone's fancy office or whatever the case may be. It has leather around it. It's a traditional flashlight with leather and a leather mounted stand. $145. Unique in any category adds to the value no matter what. Unique is always good no matter what you're looking at. Now, like the Campbell one I showed you, this is another one that you have to crank with the hand pump on this one here. Most of these sorts I see over from Europe. I believe this is either, yeah, this one's a French unit, I do believe, here. I've seen them made in Germany, England. There are some U.S. companies that made similar versions of this as well. Most of these will sell for some decent money, 50 bucks or better, no matter what, on almost any given day. Now, an area of this that I do source out specifically, I do like military-related items such as this one here. This is a boxed version, an original one in the box, one of the very first models of this style of military flashlight. The original earlier ones are brass, just like the other ones we were showing you. Brass with good olive drab paint and black accents, $441 because this one is in the box. I have never seen the box until this listing here, actually. That's how scarce these boxes are. Even some of the price guides that I have for military items don't show the box in them. Very, very scarce. The box adds an incredible amount to this listing. Now, the first one we showed you with the box, here's the same one in just about the same condition. This one only went for $205. So more than half the value in the first one I showed you with the the box was because of the box. Someone is a flashlight collector, maybe not necessarily a military collector, and wanted that box. That box is where the money was at. Boxes for these sorts of things very, very rarely show up, and they usually double, triple the price of the item itself. Now here's another interesting flashlight. This is a trench light, basically. This was made to mount on a soldier from World War One, 1917-ish. To tell these apart, it actually has the eagle button snap on one side. And that would snap onto their gear, and it could be mounted so they could see, and they could use it hands-free. It's basically a hands-free flashlight, 150 bucks basically. You may find this without the strap and may not realize that this is a military piece if you don't look at it closely. Most of these are marked with some sort of military marks. Now this one's made by the Interstate Electric Novelty Company, but there's probably around 30 or so different companies that made this 
version or several others that were similar to this. Foreign versions of this as well all over the place. But as I said, they don't have to be super old. This is from the 90s era here. New in the package, they're high gain, 150 flashlights, diamond light. Now these are things that can still show up in markdowns, wholesale blowouts, discontinued lots, and things like that. You will still find some of these at those junk lot sales. Most people haven't a clue that these carry any sort of value. Hence, if you pick them up, you can make some good money on these. You can find these in junk stores still to this day. If I'm out, I can still find some sort of vintage flashlight pretty much any day of the week if I really want to dig into it. This lot here of two NOS new old stocks sold for $179. Now here is a 1980s original mag light, $156. Mags are used all over the place. They're standardized flashlights nowadays. The vintage ones though can go for some good money. These aluminum ones, blue anodized aluminum on this one here. Excellent one for $156. Now, you can also find novelty and character ones for pretty much anything. Superman, Batman, Marvel, movie-related ones, all sorts of different things. This one just happens to be a Batman one. 1966, it's an original. It folds out, flaps out. $150 on this one. This one actually can be found in the box still out in the wild sometimes. I have seen versions of these at auctions. There's other ones that sell on eBay as well. So, excellent item here also. Now, just one more advertising one. This is Captain Rayovac. Now, Rayovac batteries made some advertising pieces. They would do cartoon strips in some of the advertisements that they published in magazines to draw people out. And this one's one of those advertising pieces tied to it. This could have been a promotional item or something like that as well. $259 for this very nice example of an early flashlight. This would probably date to the 1940s, 1950s era, I would guess, somewhere in that range. Excellent example fine condition. Usually the decals will be long since gone on something like this. Now one last area I mentioned just a few minutes ago are batteries in general. Vintage batteries for flashlights or pretty much anything can sell for some good money. We've sold little burned out batteries that have no juice left in them for 20, 30, 40 bucks all the way up to a few hundred dollars on many, many occasions. So if I find the flashlight and there's vintage batteries, even if they don't work, I will sell those on their own too. So if I find a vintage flashlight with vintage batteries in there, you've got a two for one. You can sell the batteries separately and then the flashlight and get some more money out of it. Vintage batteries do sell. I don't care if they work or not, as I said. I do believe there is a process to recharge these. So some of the vintage collectors can actually use vintage batteries in a vintage flashlight. They'll still take the standardized battery. They're just twice as long or something along that line for most of these sorts of batteries. Excellent one here in the box for $200 and $25. But that's it for today. Well, there we have it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. to challenge the worst villains on Earth are the most powerful heroes ever in the Battle of the Superpowers Collection. Impossible. The Hall of Justice under attack. Batman behind bars. New from Kenner's Superpowers Collection. Hall of Justice playset. Some assembly required. Vehicles and figures sold separately. Use the trap door, Batman. Brainiacs taking over the computer. Joker in the elevator. Evil forces joining for a final assault. Who can restore order? Superman. Can Superman save the Hall of Justice? You decide.